This news is funded by viewers like you. Please support our work at democracynow.org slash give. We begin today's show looking at Gaza. As Israel expands its air and ground assault on the besieged territory days after a truce between Israel and Hamas ended, Palestinian health officials say Israel's killed at least 800 people since Saturday. Here at the UN Climate Summit in Dubai, over 100 protesters gathered on the sidelines of the summit for a peaceful action in solidarity with the people of Palestine, demanding a ceasefire in Gaza. The rally took place across the, from the uh, United Arab Emirates Pavilion inside Dubai's Expo City, where the summit's being held. U.S. climate envoy John Kerry drove past as the action was starting. Hindered by U.N. restrictions blocking protesters from raising Palestinian flags or naming any specific country, demonstrators held banners with watermelons painted on them, a well-known symbol of the Palestinian movement as the fruit bears Palestine's national colors, red, black, and green. The UAE bans protests and organized groups, but has allowed some actions during the summit. Protesters were also prohibited from chanting phrases like from the river to the sea and free Palestine. Some still did in defiance. Several wore Palestinian kafiyas. Dozens of protesters wept as speakers read some of the names of the over 15,000 Palestinians killed by Israeli strikes in Gaza since October 7th, including more than 6,000 children. Democracy Now! was there. When human rights are under attack, what do we do? We'll be reading for you today from the Gaza Ministry of Health a list of names of all those who've been killed since October 7th. Mu'az Etemad Yusef Dalul, female, a male, six years old. Tala Amjad Anyan Abu Ayat, five years old. Ibn Amjad Anyan Abu Ayat, three years old. Hamza Muhammad Nahid Al Fasi, three years old. The names. Are still being written. My name is Tarek Lublin. I'm a Ghazawi born in Detroit. This violence is not happening just in my hometown of Gaza, it's happening everywhere. Um, being in Detroit, there are so many situations in which water has been cut off. Being just down the street from Flint, Michigan, we see water um, be poisoned and polluted for the people and the residents of Flint. And precedents like that, where people are expendable, is only possible because of the violence we see inflicted upon people back in my homeland. And because of that, we are taking the stand here today, not just as Palestinian people, myself, but people who are allied with justice for all people across the world, because that is what is necessary to have true climate justice. What good is finding a world that is green if the roots are so soaked in blood? What good is a world that is green if there's nobody left to live in it? The precedent set on people's lives and the calculations we make as to who is expendable that is the precedent we set for who is expendable anywhere. Hey ho, take me by the hand. Strong in solidarity we stand. Human rights and justice, human rights and justice. Hey ho, in the apartheid. Marhaba. Just because now we have social media, we were able to see some of the facts. Have you seen this TikTok that went viral? We know TikToks that goes viral about food. Did you see this TikTok about how you remove white phosphorus from your body? Because white phosphorus weapons are being shelled on people, shelled on civilians, shelled on women and children. And this is where most of the casualties are. Lots of women where we had almost 50,000 women pregnant trying to deliver at this time of the period. And these women, lots of them lost their lives. And if you have seen also these newborn babies, have you seen them? Have you seen them struggling for air to breathe? But unfortunately, electricity was cut off. They had no food, no water, no sanitation. They had nothing to breathe on. They had nothing to survive on. And lots of these newborn children were killed. And let's be their voices.
I come here uh, from the, the continent of North America representing our indigenous peoples of our Muscogee uh, communities who uh, for many years now we have lived in an occupied state. We were dispossessed of our lands. We were forced upon reservations where we were confined to one area. The water and the resources that we had known for thousands upon thousands of years were taken from us and commodified and exported and stolen from our peoples. Today we come here and I stand here and have been asked to say these words because I stand in solidarity with each one of my relatives here and everything that you're going through, my relatives on these lists here, I'm never going to forget those names that are being said in one day. I will greet them when I join them in the spirit world. But today I want to say something before more violence is incurred that this has to stop now. I stand here uh, as a member of Africans Rising, which is a Pan-African movement of Africans working for unity, justice, peace, and dignity. Just like Desmond Tutu said, if you're neutral in situations of injustice, you have chosen the side of the oppressor. So we are here because we have decided that we shall not be neutral. Sisters, brothers, uh, solidarity greetings from the Global Campaign to Demand Climate Justice. Today we stand in a space bearing the words of the United Nations in a process we are deeply committed to as the eyes, ears and voices of our people fighting for justice. The body that was created after the horrors of the Second World War with a promise of never again. A promise that made it illegal to target civilians. A promise that it made it illegal to use food, water, medicine as a weapon of war. A promise of human rights. A promise that all people would be able to live with dignity, free from occupation and oppression. And, these, and for these last two months, we have witnessed not just the Palestinian people starved, trapped, cut off from the world, bombed and killed, their screams echoing throughout the night with no hope of rescue. As every morning, we wait desperately for that message that our friends and our colleagues are still alive. But whilst watching the international community stand in silence, and again, not just for these last two, mil two months, but, but for 15 years of an illegal blockade, for 50 years of an occupation and apartheid, and 100 years of ethnic cleansing and settler colonialism. We watched an international community that has been actively complicit in war crimes, in crimes against humanity, where the genocidal intent isn't even bothered to be hidden anymore. And still, of course, that's not enough. We've seen hospitals, schools bombed. We've seen medics, journalists, and even UN staff killed. 18,000 people, human rights and humanitarian law, it's lying shreds. And some ask, some ask us, why do we care about the Palestinians? Why do climate justice groups mobilize in their millions from Pakistan to the Philippines, from Belgium to Brazil, from South Africa to Sweden? Why is it that people from all around the world, black, white, brown, Jew, Muslim, Christian, are taken to the streets? It's because we have seen the masks that have slipped. We have seen how the Palestinians are not even viewed as human beings. And in the faces of the Palestinians, for black, brown, and indigenous people, we see our past, our present, and our future, of lives deemed less valuable than others, of an arc of 500 years of colonialism and racialized capitalism, of sacrificed people and of sacrificed land, of the powerful profiting from oppression, but then saying they don't have any money for climate finance, but billions for bombs and bullets against the people. And we say, and we say to those powerful countries who put words of human rights into text over there that no amount of empty words will ever erase your complicity. You not only wrote the blank check, you enabled this, you own this, you own this as much as those who are put, dropping the bombs on the terrified people of Palestine. So here today, we, the peoples of the world, say to the Palestinian people, the international community over there may have forgotten you, 
but you are not alone. You will never be alone because we are all Palestinians. Cease by now, end settler colonialism, end apartheid, end of occupation, free Palestine. We are going to close this moment by respecting the names, the identities, the children, the women, the mothers, the fathers, the journalists have been murdered. We are going to read some of those names. Isa Ahmed, Isa Nashar, eight years old. Zaid Sabri Musleh Radi, eight years old. Faiz Shadi, Faiz Al Dakka, eight years old. Mena Hissam Mahmoud Abu Ayada, 14 years old. Mahmoud Muhammad Fathi Al Shair, 14 years old. Amjad Khalid Kamal Raswan, 3 years old. Salma Muhammad Al Khalil Abu Lola, 2 years old. Democracy Now! is funded by viewers like you. Please give today at democracynow.org/give.